What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Channel 8 Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Go, and today I just want to share with you my thoughts about Nike and Kobe's contract expiring and just my general thoughts surrounding that situation. Today's episode is sponsored by StockX. And for all my Canadian listeners out there, StockX is your go-to source for your best global pricing and your biggest selection of all current culture products. So with the introduction of StockX Canada, they've introduced what they call their all-in pricing. So that means any cost you're paying, whether that's the cost of the item, the taxes, the processing fees, the shipping, all of this is visible for you to see before you check out. So at first glance, it might seem like it's more expensive than some of their competitors, but in reality, this is actually the most honest pricing, and it means there's no additional costs or no hidden fees when the product shows up at your door. And in addition, StockX Canada helps to match Canadian buyers with Canadian sellers to reduce any duties or taxes where possible, and it also means the product shows up at your door even faster. So with this all-in pricing system from StockX, this is definitely my favorite way to shop. Kicking off the show, I just wanted to talk to you about the shoes that I picked up for the week. And all in all, it's been a pretty light week. I got a pair of the Nice Kicks, Amoeba Music, and New Balance 992s, courtesy of StockX. So I got the gray and yellow colorway, so that one was definitely my favorite of the two. I didn't really like the black and teal one, it wasn't really my thing, but the the gray and yellow one definitely spoke to me, so super excited to have that one. I posted my review on that yesterday on my YouTube channel, so if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to click onto my YouTube channel to watch. The next show I got was courtesy of Converse Canada, so a huge thank you goes out to them. They sent me over the Kim Jones collaboration on the Chuck 70 Utility Wave, I think that's the official name, and I got the Natural Ivory colorway. So right when the picture is released, there's something about this shoe that really spoke to me. I think it kind of looks more like an actual sneaker, there's more bulk to it, and I was just really feeling the design. It kind of looks like there's a shoe sitting on top of another shoe, and I don't know, I just like the vibes. And I'm pretty sure most sizes are still sitting. So if you guys are looking to grab a pair, they should still be pretty readily available. So uh, definitely don't wait too long. Aside from that, I got the Air Jordan 11 uh, Lowe's in the Legend Blue colorway, super fire colorway, perfect for summer. Can't wait to wear that one. And then the last pair I got was the Club 58 SB Dunk Low or the Golf SB Dunk Low. Um, This one pairs up perfectly with my Pink Pig SBs. Both of these, of course, are car inspired. Um, Another amazing colorway, kind of matches my shirt actually. So really excited to wear that one too. In terms of what shoes I've worn during the week, so I wore the Nigel Sylvester Air Jordan 1s. I broke out the SB Dunk High Skunks for 420. Um, I wore the Kobe 4 Playoff Pack following the whole announcement of Nike and Kobe terminating their relationship. Um, And then aside from that, I wore the Air Jordan 3 Tinker Energies. And then the last pair I wore for the week was the Air Force One Nike ID or Nike by You. This one sort of has like a Rick Owens inspiration behind it. So uh, if you haven't seen that, I posted that on my Instagram page as well. So jumping into the meat and the potatoes for today's episode, we're talking about Nike, we're talking about Kobe, we're talking about how their contract has ended and how there's rumors that it's not going to be renewed. So Vanessa Bryant, Kobe's wife, she posted on her Instagram, and I'm going to read you what she said. Kobe's Nike contract expired on April 13th, 2021. Kobe and Nike have made some of the most beautiful basketball shoes of all time, worn and adored by fans and athletes in all sports across the globe. It seems fitting that more NBA players wear my husband's product than any other signature shoe. My hope will always be to allow Kobe fans to get and wear his products. I will continue to fight for that. Kobe's products sell out in seconds. That says everything. And then she continues on with, I was hoping to forge a lifelong partnership with Nike that reflects my husband's legacy, and we will always do everything we can to honor Kobe and Gigi's legacies. That will never change. And then on April 21st, someone from Nike confirmed that Kobe's contract officially expired, um, and they say after his estate declined to renew the contract, and then they were quoted with saying, Kobe Bryant was an important part of Nike's deep connection to consumers. This was spoken by Josh Benedek, who is a Nike spokesman, and he said that he pushed us and made everyone around him better. Though our contractual relationship has ended, he remains a deeply loved member of the Nike family. So all this comes after it was tweeted back in December of 2020. There was a tweet published by Shervin Peshavar, who's an American venture capitalist, and he had tweeted that he met with Kobe Bryant in late December of 2019. Kobe wasn't happy with Nike and was going to leave in 2020. Kobe was going to start Mamba, a shoe company owned by players. He passed away weeks later. 
what he was about to do in business was going to eclipse his sports career. And at the time when um, Shervin had tweeted this, it wasn't sure whether he was just talking BS or whether it was legitimate. But it seems like now after uh, everything that has been uncovered, it seems like this was actually very true. So taking a look at this from a high level, it seems like Vanessa Bryant was unhappy with how Nike was rolling out their products. And she had specifically mentioned how Kobe shoes were selling out in seconds and a lot of people that really want their shoes were not able to get it. And I've seen a lot of people offer this suggestion online about how Nike should offer a pre-order system for Kobe shoes. Back when I started collecting shoes here in Toronto, Canada, around the mid to late 2000s, our Foot Locker stores would actually offer a pre-order system. So for hyped Jordan releases, we would go into the store maybe a couple months before the release date, and we would be charged the amount of the shoe on a gift card, pay for the gift card, and then when the release date came around, our name would be on the list, our shoes would be guaranteed, and then we would just exchange the shoe for the amount on the gift card that we already prepaid for. So myself, along with other sneaker fans, personally, we loved the system. There was no stress. Yes, Foot Locker would be taking our money for a month's time or two months, but there was no concept of having to line up on the release date. There was no concept of entering raffles. You literally just wake up on the release date, go to your Foot Locker store and pick up the pair or the pairs. Sometimes I would pre-order a couple with absolutely zero fuss. So the question is, would a pre-order system work in today's climate with Nike Kobe shoes. And honestly, I can see two different schools of thoughts with this. From the pro side, obviously the most important benefit is it gives fans what they want. Kobe Bryant, even though he's passed, is still one of the most beloved NBA players of all time. And there's a ton of fans, not only in California, but honestly across the entire world that would love to own Kobe shoes. It's just that stock is so limited and it's really, really tough to grab a pair these days for retail. So by offering this pre-order system, it gives people the chance that want the shoe to prepay for the sneaker and lock it down without going through all the hoops and the hassles that people have to go through to get shoes these days. From Nike's perspective, I think it also benefits them in many ways. First off, I think you really eliminate wasted inventory. So obviously this depends on how many pairs they plan on releasing, but oftentimes you see a lot of shoes just sitting on shelves, a lot of shoes end up at outlets, and if they don't even sell there, who knows what happens to them? Do they get recycled? Do they get thrown out? But the beauty of the pre-order system is that it matches the pairs to an already paying buyer. So technically there's really no pairs that are unaccounted for. You're really manufacturing to order. And by doing so, you're really maximizing your profit as well. So your sales are gonna be meeting the peak level of demand and there's no potential profits that are left on the table. So for example, these days, if they're releasing a limited Kobe shoe and they release 20,000 pairs, yes, those 20,000 pairs will sell and they'll sell out right away, but how much potential profit is Nike leaving on the table? If there's 200,000 people that want a Kobe shoe and those 200,000 people were willing to pay the price to get the shoe, that's 180,000 pairs times the retail price of the shoe in dollars that you're missing out in revenue. So that covers the fan perspective, it covers Nike's perspective, and also from a reseller perspective, depending obviously on how Nike does this, but if it's like a set pre-order window and it's only open once and never again, so that means once they do this pre-order, they're not gonna reopen this window and have more people pre-order later on. So if that's the case, people that wanna resell Kobe's, technically they could pre-order the shoes, they could sit on them, wait it out as more and more people undead stock their shoes and there's less dead stock pairs in the market. And eventually, and inevitably, there's gonna be people who missed out on this pre-order window. So for various reasons, whether it's just a timing issue, they, they weren't online when this happened, or if it's a matter of finances, let's say they just didn't have enough money at the time of the pre-order window, to afford to buy a pair of Kobe's. At some point later on in time, there will be people that are looking for these pairs of Kobe's. And like I said, once more and more people undead stock their Kobe's, the people that sit on these dead stock pairs, they'll be able to command some sort of premium to resell their shoes. However, on the flip side, I also see why this pre-order system just doesn't make sense. First off, and probably the most important point is that I heard someone say, Nike doesn't sell shoes, Nike sells hype. And in many ways, that's kind of true. Of all these major sneaker brands, Nike is the king and they're the masters at managing hype. And we've seen this time and time again with different silhouettes. For example, the Nike Dunk, they released in 2020 in very limited fashion, not just talking about Nike SB, but even the Nike Sportswear Dunks. All those pairs were really limited and they were really hard to get. So we see how they build up the hype with the Nike Dunk. We see people get frustrated because they say, we just want a pair to wear and they're taking L after L after L. 
And then as usual in 2021, they start flooding the market with more and more colorways. And because of the hype that built up in 2020 and with everyone taking L's, even though there's so many colorways of the Nike Dunks releasing this year, people are still flocking to the silhouette because of the hype, despite the fact that the quality on the 2021 Dunks are absolutely terrible. So Nike definitely knows what they're doing when it comes to the hype, and they know that if Kobe's were available to be pre-ordered by anyone, the demand just wouldn't be as high as it would be the more shoes they release. So I'm sure the first couple pairs that they offer for pre-order, it would sell very, very well. And that's natural because a lot of people are taking L's on Kobe's. So if they're able to pre-order a couple pairs, I'm sure most of us would. But if Nike offers up more and more pairs for pre-order, the interest is inevitably going to die down. So with this hype reducing, how would this impact Nike's brand image? And I think they know that the reduced hype would hurt their image. It'd be a very interesting financial analysis, and I'm sure they've done it in-house before, but would the sales generated from pre-orders outweigh the impact that losing any hype surrounding the product line has on their bottom line? So like my earlier example with the 200,000 pairs, so say you're able to pre-order 200,000 pairs, that hits your bottom line, but say the next colorway releases and only 180,000 people want to pre-order, and then 160 for the next release, and so on and so on, and eventually it might get to the point where people don't really want Kobe's anymore because anyone can get them, and because everyone else has all the previous colorways that released earlier. So like I said, I'm sure this is an analysis that Nike has done before, and then being masters at managing hype, I'm sure there's some sort of of financial reasonability behind this. I hear a lot of people say, well, we're true Kobe fans and we all really want his shoes and just give the fans what they want. It doesn't matter if hype is dead. And I'm sure there are true Kobe fans out there, people that love the Lakers, people that love Kobe's game. But I feel like there's also people that say this now, but if all of Kobe's shoes were actually pre-orderable, how would that impact your decision-making and how would that impact your preferences? So taking it to the extreme, a lot of people say, for example, the Nike Mag, the What the Dunks, Air Yeezys, all those are grails. But for example, if all those shoes were just sitting on shelves at Foot Locker, or in this case, if all those shoes were pre-orderable and they were constantly available, how many people would still consider them the grails? How much of us are in the sneaker game for the hype, for the exclusivity, versus the actual true love of the sneaker? So that's definitely something to consider as well. Another point I want to make was, would bots eat up the pre-orders? We've seen this with Nike by you or Nike ID when there was like a limited collaboration like the Levi's for example or even the Nike Dunk Low that they recently did this year. Yes, this is technically a pre-order system because you're ordering your design, you're prepaying and then you wait a month or two for the shoe to arrive at your door. But for the hype drops like this, even Nike by you sells out pretty much instantly. So if Nike was to release Kobe's in such a limited fashion, even though it's a pre-order system, I think the same issue would exist. We'd have resellers and their bots snatching up all available slots. And like we saw with the Nike Dunks, people are posting them on eBay trying to resell their custom creations. So I don't even know if a pre-order system would address the issue of resell unless they truly made it like an unlimited quantity. But again, I don't know if that's within Nike's appetite to do that. It's interesting though, because Kobe's, from what I can remember, they would always go on sale and sometimes they would even hit outlets as well. And even the few months before Kobe died, like it wasn't even that long ago, the Pro Tro 1s, they were definitely sitting at outlets. I had the opportunity to grab the pair and the Pro Tro 4s, they were definitely on sale at stores. I had no issues grabbing my playoff pack colorway and the uh, the Charlotte Hornets colorway. And even for like a hyped colorway, like the Chaos Pro Tro 5s, I went to Foot Locker about 30 minutes before the store opened and I was one of the first three or first five in line. So it's not like Kobe's have sold super well throughout their history, and I'm sure Nike knows this. That leaves us with the question, where is the middle ground? And I've seen a lot of people suggest this, and I think it kind of makes sense. They could offer this pre-order system for maybe a couple pairs of shoes per year, but still make these limited releases to maintain the allure and the whole status of the brand. So for example, they could celebrate Mama Day on 824 and make certain colorways pre-orderable on that day. And I think this satisfies both parties. It gives Kobe fans the opportunity to lock in a pair for sure. And at the same time, by releasing limited colorways throughout the year, it doesn't completely dilute the Mamba brand and it still maintains the hype and the status of Kobe products. So Kobe's aren't seen as just GR pairs sitting on shelves all the time. You know, as we get further removed from Kobe's years as a player, 
the future customers that are buying Kobe's shoes, they're going to find it harder to connect with him as a player and to love him for the reasons why we love him. And it's sort of like Air Jordans these days. A lot of people that buy Air Jordans now, they never got the opportunity to watch MJ as a player. And a lot of people like Air Jordans because of their status, because of the fact that they're limited. And I can see Nike wanting to take the Mamba brand in a similar route and elevate it to be more of a premium and limited product so that there's still some level of prestige associated with the Mamba brand so that future consumers will be attracted to his products. So that's my thoughts. Obviously, there's no right or wrong. Um, it's kind of a tough situation. I think Nike and Vanessa Bryant's philosophies at the core are just so different. But hopefully, they'll be able to find some sort of middle ground and reach an agreement. And personally, I'd be very surprised if this is actually the official end of Nike and Kobe. So let me know your thoughts. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about this whole situation. Do you think a pre-order system is feasible? Do you think it would satisfy not only the fans, but would it make sense for a brand like Nike as well? So share your comments down below and hit me up on Instagram as well if you guys just ever want to discuss this topic. So the Channel 8 podcast is available on most of your major podcast platforms, including iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean. You can check me out on YouTube as well on youtube.com slash Sean Go and on Twitter at Sean.go spelled out. So this has been another episode of the Channel 8 podcast. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you for your support and love. And until next time, I'll catch you guys all in the next episode. Mm -hmm.